Hi guys, Olivia here, Pumpkin Hollow Quilts. Today is Friday, March 20th, and it has been two weeks since my last update. I hope you have all been well and you've been stitching all of the things. Over the last couple of weeks, life has certainly changed for all of us. Um, both kids are home. They got very early spring breaks. Uh, Allison has been home since last Friday and Ethan's last day of school was last Friday. Maybe Allison came home on Thursday and Ethan's last day of school was on Friday. Nope, she came home also on Friday because we made her. Um, but uh, her, so for Allison, um, the school is kind of shut down. Um, they encouraged all the kids to come home and then they uh, decided to put all of the spring term online. And so, and then after doing that, they told all the kids, you need to come clean out your dorms and move out. They want all the kids gone. And if you can't leave, of course, they'll find some place for you to stay. But they're like, if you're able to go home, you know, go ahead, get your stuff, check out, and then we'll see you next fall, basically. Even though she'll be doing it online. So I know she's a little bit disappointed that she won't get to be on campus for all of the spring activities, um, but next year. And then of course, Ethan, his last day of school was last Friday. We're technically on spring break right now, um, but then they went ahead and extended that out until April 20th. And I know that the teachers are working to get like some online um, stuff for them to do while we are, you know, essentially on spring break. Um, but we are all healthy. Um, everyone's doing good. Um, the whole family is healthy. And so that is, I don't think, I know that there have been some cases of the coronavirus here in Oregon, um, but so far um, a lot of people are staying home and, um, you know, they're taking every precaution to, you know, hopefully stop the spread of it. I think there's a rumor going around that the state's going to shut down. And so we'll have to see if uh, that happens where they do kind of quarantine us for a couple of weeks. But as of right now, you know, we're, 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 you know, staying home. We have no plans to go anywhere except maybe the grocery store. And that's, that's about it. Oh, and then to go get all of Allison's stuff to move her home from college. So anyway, I'm in a new location today, as you can tell. Um, the, uh, the area where I normally film because it's later in the day than when I normally do it. Um, there was a horrible shadow right in the middle of the viewfinder. And so anything I would hold up, it just was a big dark patch. So Allison suggested I move out here. And so her and Brian helped me, you know, gather up all my stuff, position the table um, so that I could go ahead and do my video. They are all kind of sequestered, um, but occasionally you will hear Ethan. He's playing video games with his friends and I can tell when something really funny or exciting happens because you might be able to hear him in the background. Um, this is my longtime gone quilt. I do get quite a few questions about it because every once in a while it'll show up in my video, whether I'm, you know, filming the, the Easter tree or the whatever seasonal tree is here. And if it's still up, I, I do get a lot of questions. This was a stitch along that happened on Instagram, I wanna say like three or four years ago. Um, it's out of the Jan Kingwell book, Long Time Gone. I think it's Long Time Gone Quilt. It was a lot of fun, it's my pride and joy. I love it so much, it's my favorite. Um, it's all scrappy. Um, some of the scraps were mine from various other quilts that I made and then some, my friend Retha, she gave me she cut off some of her scraps and gave it so that mine could be even more scrappier. And so it was a lot of fun to put together. Um, it was participated all over the world. And so it was fun seeing everyone in all these different countries, their, their, um, their color palettes and, and, you know, the way that they, you know, finish theirs and just everything. It was just so much fun to be a part of something that big. And I know every once in a while there are smaller groups that will get together either at quilt shops or um, even on Instagram, Facebook, and this will be the quilt that they put together. And I've never seen one that I didn't love and it was just a lot of fun. And so the book is um, Long Time Gone Quilt by Jan Kingwell. And then of course, here is my Easter tree all decorated. So the room that I'm in is my living room and I'm in front of a big plate glass window. Uh, so you probably will see like the room behind me might light up or my face might light up when a car goes by 
and if the sun shines on it and reflects. So hopefully you won't mind that. Hopefully the road noise won't be that bad. Um, but yeah, my new location. So uh, over the past couple of weeks, I have done my usual uh, routine of stitching. I thought I would have more time to do more stitching, but in fact, I've just been super busy and I'm hoping maybe things will kind of settle down once we get Allison moved home. Maybe I'll have a little bit more time in the day to sit down and, and do some stitching, but I've been keeping pretty busy. And with the weather being so nice, it's supposed to be 65 today. So I know that I'll probably be working out my flower beds fairly soon. So, First things first, um, and I, I don't know how sturdy the table, you know, this, I'm, my camera's actually perched on the coffee table right now, and so I don't know how sturdy it is, and so I apologize if it shakes a little bit. I'm totally new to this spot, so I don't, I have no idea how it's even going to work. I hope that the sound of my voice comes across, and it doesn't sound tinty, so we'll have to see. This is a total test run of this room. Normally, I would have taken my camera out to the, my dungeon area and filmed out there, but it is a hot mess and uh, I don't really want to go clean it up. <laughs> I have to go clean it up, but I don't really want to go clean it up. So let's start with a couple of questions from my last video. I just have two. Um, the first one is from Cindy, and I apologize if I butcher your name, Barger. Um, she wanted to know if there was a story behind the Egyptian bust. And so she is talking about this one right here, which is kind of ironic that I'm filming out here right in front of the bust. So if you can, hopefully you can see it. Uh, so when my husband and I first got married, um, he has always been a big fan of Egyptian, um, ancient Egyptian culture, um, decor, that kind of stuff. And so when we first got married, we were collecting, um, we were gonna do our, a living, our living room in Egyptian theme. And so that year for Christmas, I believe his sister gave us this. And it and um, it's holding a speaker right now. Here, let me move out of the way. So it's holding a speaker right now. And underneath there used to be a glass table. And so it was supposed to be kind of like an end table and he was holding the end table, but the table broke. And so instead we used it to perch the speaker for the TV so that you get sound coming on this side of the room. And so we've had him for 20 years now and he's moved with us every place we went. And uh, we just have never had the heart really to get rid of him, even though he's, you know, just basically standing there like this and doesn't really fit in with the decor that we have now. I think we just kind of keep him for nostalgia's sake. And uh, that's the story of the bust. Um, and then Belinda Pittman, she wanted to know how I determined my stitching rotation. So I usually try to maybe do it a little bit seasonally. Um, and I also look at what I want to accomplish for the year, how big the project is. And then that kind of determines when I start it. You know, for instance, the long time or long time. The anniversaries of the heart, I wanna have that finished by December 31st. So in order to hopefully achieve that goal, I needed to start it as soon and as early as in the year as I possibly could, as well as Brian's stocking. Again, I knew I needed to start it sooner rather than later. And so a lot of it is just either based on how big the project is and what season it's being finished for or what I'm stitching it for. Um, and then, of course, I will try to pop in little bits of the current season. So I do have an Easter one that I'm working on in this rotation. And uh, I hope that answers your question. That's just, um, I had to sit down and think about it a little bit, like what drives my, my rotation. And a lot of it would have to be seasonally. And just kind of when do I want to get this done? So I hope that kind of answers your question. And then I was going to go through and I was going to, there was a couple other questions that I was going to, um, you know, answer and pull stuff, but because I don't know how long this video is going to be, and I don't know how long my troops are going to stay to that side of the house, um, I might answer a, more questions in my next video. 
Uh, for instance, um, I've been asked how do I store my DMC and I have boxes that I stored in and I was gonna bring them out and show them, but I have kind of limited space and I'm not used to this setup. And so maybe in my next video, I will talk about that. I did get some happy mail um, over the last two weeks. And this is the card that came. Let me make sure it's, I think this is the right way. Uh, Donna Kirkland had contacted me and she told me that she wanted to send me Little House Needleworks Pops Garage. And I think this is part of the, well, it is part of the hometown holiday series. This is the very first one. I have kind of thought about um, collecting the others because I think it would be kind of cool to have a tree that is completely decorated and all of these different ones. And I think the quilt shop just came out not too long ago and they're all just really super cute and super fun. And I love seeing them when they pop up on social media when someone has finished them because they usually finish them in a cute little ornament or a pillow and they just look like so much fun. And so she sent me this and she also sent me this quilt book, Winter Wonderland by Sherry Falls. And I absolutely love it. And thank you so much, Donna, for thinking of me. And I appreciate it so much. And it was so sweet of you. And your card is, card is fantastic. I love it. So beautiful. So thank you so much for thinking of me and sending those to me. So over the past couple of weeks, I have done a little bit of shopping. I did some market shopping. And then I just also, while I was shopping for market stuff, I also picked up a couple of charts on my wish list. I realize now that it was more of emotional shopping. Uh, and I did not do all of this within two weeks. It was more like four weeks. Not that there's a lot, but I still feel like, did you really need all this stuff, Olivia? <laughs> um, so to start off with, I was supposed to go up to Acorns and Threads on Friday for market day. And with everything going on, I completely spaced it until it got about late morning, early afternoon. And I don't really live, I live about 45 minutes away from Acorns and Threads. And so when you go, you kind of have to plan it a little bit um, because traffic can be very tricky on a Friday. And yeah, I just, I couldn't believe that I had forgot. I mean, I'd been looking forward to it for weeks and then the day finally arrives and I ju it just slipped out of my mind. There was just absolutely so much going on. And so I know that my charts are up there. Uh, what you do is when you um, order something, when it comes in, they just stick it in a bag. And so I hope that at some point I will be able to go get it. I know I can call and they will send it to me and I'm just kind of waiting to see kind of what's, ha what's gonna happen um, before I either go pick it up or just order it and have it shipped to me. But I did pick up couple of other things that had come out at market um, I purchased from I purchased these two from the cottage needle on Etsy and the first one is Plum Street Samplers a shepherd's song love this one I who doesn't love a polka dotted sheep I love it I love the house I just love everything about it and then um, this is the Scarlet House seeking refuge and I can't think of a better quote for what is happening right now. I know that this holds very true for me, even on a regular basis, this quote. So I picked that one up. And then from Threads Entwined, I got this Sewing Club by Blackbird. And I love this, I'm so excited. As soon as it came, I flipped through it and spent many, time, many hours pouring over all of the charts. And I love it all, I just love Blackbird. And so I was happy that that came. And then not market related, I got a subscription to Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. I would kind of been on the fence about it for the last year. And then I decided to go ahead and sign up after their Christmas issue had come out. And of course it has the new design from Priscilla and Chelsea. But the one that I really, really loved was this cute little bunny on the back. And then inside, and I will show it really quick. Maybe. I thought it was not that far back. Oh, here it is. This one. I think that's so perfect for spring. Love it. 
And I think I might just do the bird in the basket and make it into a little uh, pillow for my three-tiered tray because it, ne it needs some stuff. It doesn't have anything in it. And I picked up Blackbird Designs, Feast of Friendship. I've had this one on my wish list for a very long time and I saw it was finally back in stock on 123 Stitch. And so I went ahead and picked it up. I also picked up a piece of 36 count Legacy because I need, I have a lot of 32 count, but 36 and 40 count is what I really need to start buying because everything all the charts and stuff that I have in my stash, a lot of it is 36 and 40 count. Um, I also got 36 count um, 18th Century Rook by Pictures Plus. Not Pictures Plus. Um, R&R. &R. And then I also got 36 count Mellow, which I think is one of my new favorite colors. I picked up uh, Plum Street Sampler's A Ghoul Tide Welcome. I also had Liberty's Welcome in my shopping cart and it sold out before I could check out. And I think just about every place I've looked, it's sold out. I've been, I'm on the hunt for Liberty's Welcome and Yuletide Welcome. I went ahead and I picked up um, Halloween at Hollyberry Farm by Stacey Nash. I've had this one on my wish list for a very long time. And I think that I am going to use the 36 count, um, 18th century rook for it. And I think that might even be what it was called for. Yes, that's what it's called for. Um, and then while well, I got Halloween, I decided I needed to get summer at Hollyberry Farm. And so I think this one might be um, one of the ones I go ahead and start stitching as soon as I'm finished with um, the Easter one that I have to show you that I've been working on. And then I also got Lady Liberty by Blackbird. So that is my stash. Some of it I probably did not need to purchase right now, but I was emotionally purchasing and I made a little bit of extra money and I decided while I had the little bit of extra money, I was going to go ahead and treat myself to some new things. I would love to be able to say that I'm going to stitch all of them this year, but that's just not going to happen because <laughs> I only have two hands and so much stitching time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean the table off and then I'm going to bring out what I have been working on. Uh, so I have been working on my Anniversaries of the Heart. It's a stitch along, which I am co-hosting with Deborah of Canopy Stitches on Instagram. It started January 1st. Uh, lots of you guys have joined in and I love seeing all of your progress and I love that you, you know, use the hashtag, which is BB Anniversaries 2020 that you tag me in it so that I know that you're working on it. I just really love it. I love seeing it. It's helping to keep me motivated because this sampler is huge and it takes a lot of time to get through it. And so I'm so grateful that so many of you guys have decided to join in and help keep me going. I, I really appreciate that so much. So in my last video, I had started the first bonus block, which is in number seven, Swan Lake. I ended up having to change out quite a bit um, here, and I finished it today. I haven't posted it yet on Instagram, but I did finish it. I put in the last stitch this morning. I was so close last night, but I was really tired and I was afraid that I was gonna make a mistake and have to spend the morning ripping it out. So I thought I'd just stop. And so I went ahead and I finished it and I love it. It looks so great. I'm stitching this on 35 count sand with some of the called for and a lot of the not called for. In the um, sampler, so if you look at the sampler, I don't know how well it's going to read, but the uh, back or the border is like greens and inside it kind of looks like shades of purple, like light to dark purple. But when I went and I did the pull, the thread pull, and I started stitching it, it wasn't until I got up here that I realized that it did not, it didn't look like the picture. And so I just kind of had to roll with it a little bit because I was not going to rip it out at all. Um, the threads are very much um, 
greens. There's some, there is some purple, there's gold and some pink. And what I decided to do, and my husband, he, my husband Brian helped me, is this, this green right here was supposed to be like a really, really light pinkish color, but I didn't feel like it blended in very well. Mine seems to be more earth tony. And so I decided to go with a darker green and that is Weeks Colored. And this is it right here. And I think it turned out pretty good. I love it. Um, I know it's not what was charted, but I do really, really love how it turned out. And now I'm excited to get on to the, I guess technically it would be the third block. And that is a wish for you. And this one is going to be uh, my in-laws blocks because my mother-in-law loved the 4th of July. She was, or 4th of July. She loves St. Patrick's Day and she very much embraced her Irish roots. And this little pot here, all of the little leaves you see are tiny four leaf clovers. And so I thought that would be perfect for their block. And I am going to take out the wording and I'm going to put their names and then their wedding date. And I, and I might just put, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put right here because I think that was just originally made for um, just one person's name and then this little saying, but definitely gonna put their names. I'll put my mother-in-law's maiden name, my father-in-law's name, and then up in these um, shamrocks, I will put the initials of their four kids. So that's my plan. I haven't pulled any of the threads yet. I probably will do that sometime over the weekend because I won't be working on this again until Tuesday is when it comes back into my rotation. And so I love it. I just absolutely love how it's turning out. It looks fantastic. So the first row has five blocks total. I was thinking, oh, I only have you know one more to go and I can go down to the next row. But then I looked at the, um, well, I can't show it to you, but I looked at the layout and it's five blocks across. So I have two more to go. But it's a lot of fun. Again, thank you to everybody who is joining us. It's been so much fun seeing all of your guys' progress. Your excitement helps keep it fun to stitch. And so I thank you so much. If you're thinking about doing it, you can join at any time. It's not a type of sal which is going to go away at the end of the year. That is just my goal to finish it by December 31st. I don't know if that's going to happen because we're already almost done with March and I'm just now getting to the March block. So it could be that it might be a little bit more into 2021 before I finish it, but I'm going to do my best to get it done by December 31st. Next up is my Queen of Freedom. And uh, it looks like she is out of print. I had a couple of people message me and say that they, in their stitching groups, they were talking about it. And she is out going out of print, which is really sad, but I understand. I mean, she's been out since 2002, I think. I think it's, I think I saw 2002. And so, I mean, I get it, you know, she probably, I think um, Kitten Stitcher talked about it in one of her videos. She said, you know, about how a designer will, you know, they have to make the choice, you know, do I want to go and print another thousand charts only to maybe not have them sell and them to sit around. So, you know, I understand. Uh, maybe she'll come out with something even more fabulous that's patriotic. So, or maybe she'll do a limited release like she did with Lady of the Flag last year. So here's my progress so far. Uh, in my last video, I think I had started down on the bottom. I had started, I think I was right in here. So I just went in, added some more details. Um, this is another little gold. It looks like this here, it, it um, comes down and it look. let's see, it goes, there's some beading here. And so it goes like this and then it drops down and then I think it scoops up and it comes up to here and then all here is fringe. So she is looking fantastic. I really hope to have her done by the time summer rolls around because it would be so much fun having her up on the wall for the 4th of July this year. 
stitching her on a piece of 32 count vintage Sahara with all of the called for DMC, Krynik, and Mill Hill. And she looks gorgeous. So once I get done with all of the stitching, then I will go back and do all of the beading and the back stitching. So she looks fantastic. And thank you for not getting bored of seeing her because I know I have been showing her since. Oh, did I pick her up again in November after I finished Sally Spencer or was that December? I don't remember, I'll have to go check. But thank you to everybody who's not getting bored of seeing her. I do appreciate it because anytime I just, because usually she's in a scroll frame. And so the only time that I see her fully is when I do my videos and I'm taking her out to press her. And so I just get so excited when I see her and see her in her full glory. And I just can't help but snap a picture. And, you know, because once the video is over, I put her back on her scroll frame and then I only see the section that I'm working on for the next two weeks. So it's fun for me to see her out and I do show her off. I always bring her out to my husband and be like, look, and he's like, okay. <laughs> but she's a lot of fun. And if you have her in her stash, or if you have her in your stash, I would encourage you to stitch her because you will love her as much as I do. So the next in my rotation is Brian's Stocking, which is Victorian Father Christmas out of the Stony Creek Cross Stitch Magazine Summer 2015 issue. I am stitching it on a piece of 28 count Lugana white and here is my progress and it's actually showing up really good um, considering when I'm out in the other room it kind of fades out a little bit and so I, I think it's showing up much better out in this room. Um, I'm stitching it with the called for DMC. It's got some Weeks dye works in there. It has Mill Hill beads. It did have some um, like sparkly, um, it's not treasure braid, but it's, it's similar to the treasure braid. And um, I eliminated that. I could not see where I was stitching when I put it in. I was getting all messed up and that's why I had to redo the bird three times. And since I have taken it out, it's going much faster. So I have Santa's face just about done. I just have a little bit more of the beard and a little bit of his hair and then um, I will be able to move down to start working on his coat. So, and currently this is out of my rotation for one more week and then it will come back in for two weeks. So the way my rotation works, it runs on in a two week block. Um, so for instance, these last two weeks, I'm right in the middle of a two week block right now. It used to be that my videos were what kind of, you know, bookmarked them, but something happened and it changed the way that my rotation was. And so right now I'm kind of in the middle of a two week rotation. And so um, Saturday and Sunday is Queen of Freedom. It is a long running whip. And so that is what the weekends are for. And so when I first started my rotation back in July, um, I was working on Glitter Village, and so Glitter Village was my Saturday and Sunday until it was finished, and then it was um, Sally Spencer until she was finished, and now Queen of Freedom. And so she will stay my Saturday and Sunday stitch until she is finished, and then something else will move into the slot, and uh, I haven't decided yet what that one will be, but it's, it's mainly for a long-standing whip that I need to get finished, get out of my rotation. And so I reserve Saturday and Sundays for that. And then Monday through Friday, I rotate between two projects. So um, for instance, this coming week, it'll be my anniversaries of the heart and it will be Madame Cottontail by With a Needle and Thread. And my hope is that I will be able to get her done over the next week. Um, that way she doesn't have to hang out my rotation any longer while I go and work on Brian's stocking. And I would kind of like to get her done because she is kind of Eastery spring. And so it'd be kind of fun to have her um, fully finished and out on display. I think I'm going to uh, finish her into a pillow and have her for my three-tiered tray. I guess it kind of depends on how big she is when she's finished. And here is my progress. So 
So I'm stitching her on a piece of 36 count Wren by Picture This Plus using a few of the called for and a bunch of the not called for. Her dress is much, it's a much deeper blue. I think originally it was supposed to be kind of a tealy color and I decided to go with a really dark blue that I had in my stash. It's Midnight by Gentle Arts and I love it. I'm stitching it two over two on 36 count. And I think she looks pretty awesome. Uh, based on the picture, I'm about halfway down her skirt. I think I'm like right above here. And I think once I get done stitching her, the rest of it might go fairly quickly, except possibly the grass at the bottom. But I love how she turned out, how she's turning out. And I ended up having to change this color. Um, it was originally supposed to be. Oh, I don't remember. It was supposed to be something else that I, that I, and I had started out stitching it and it blended in with the wren and I, so I took it out and I'm using wood trail, I think, as her, um, I guess, skin tone. But she looks good. The white is antique lace, which I had left over from the Pineberry Lane home. And so I'm just using the rest of what I had. Sorry, I can see my brother's calling me and I have to, I'm hoping that my phone is still recording. Yep, it looks like it's recording. <laughs> um, this is the colors that I am using. And so a few of them is the called for, but a lot of them are not the called for. And I just kind of went with some that I thought looked good together. And yeah, I think it's coming along pretty good. If I feel like something's not working, I'll take it out. But all in all, I like it. I think it looks good. Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my stuff around. I do have a giveaway winner. This video is not going to have a giveaway. Um, I kind I kind of went back and forth about it. I just didn't have time to make a project bag for it. Um, and then I was kind of looking through my stash and I just thought, you know, it's okay if every once in a while I don't do a giveaway. I hope you'll still comment below um, and in my next video, since I'll have, you know, two weeks to kind of think about it in my next video, I'll try to, you know, find something really cool to give away. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean all this off and then I'm going to announce the giveaway winner and then we'll go on from there. So in my last video, I had a giveaway for this project bag. And my question was, what is something that came out at market that you that's on your must get list or something like that? Um, it has something to do with market. And so thank you to everybody who answered the question. Um, I ended up having to go look up what some of them were, um, like Teresa Kogut, she came out with a sampler. Um, I had no idea and it's beautiful. And it's on my wish list now, as well as a bunch of other ones. Um, and so it was nice to, you know, when you, you know, you put out a question like that, it's it's nice because sometimes you, the feed, the information that you get, you had no idea. And so you're able to go and look and maybe find a new designer and explore, you know, it, it kind of gets you out of your comfort zone a little bit and to look and see what is also available out there. So I had quite a few people enter and thank you to everyone who answered the question. I appreciate it. And the winner of this project bag is Soccer Mom 2001. So congratulations. If you can get a hold of me, my email is pumpkinhollowquilting at gmail.com. I will hopefully get this out to you in the mail next week. Thank you so much for playing. I appreciate it. And I promise that in my next video, I will have a giveaway or maybe two. Um, but um, I do appreciate all of you guys who like the video, that you subscribe to the video, that you, you know, that you answer the question or that you, you know, you, even if you don't necessarily, um, you know, enter the giveaway, you will still leave a very kind comment. And I appreciate that because in my last video, I think it had only been out an hour and I already had six dislikes on it. I'm like, what? Haters are out early today, I guess. And it was I don't know. Some videos, they do really, really well, and it seems to make everybody happy. And then other videos, it's only out for a handful of minutes, and then all of a sudden, bloop, bloop, there's just a bunch of dislikes. And I'm thinking, I didn't say anything. Like, I didn't say anything bad. You know, I don't know. 
So anyway, I appreciate all of you guys though that do hit the like button. I appreciate it. And I appreciate that you come back every two weeks. You guys are the best. So as far as the cross stitching go goes, that is the end. I do have some, uh, I want to talk a little bit about some quilting. And so I know not everybody likes to hear about that. And so this is a great stopping off point. Um, I hope you will come back in two weeks to see what I've been up to. You can always follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I will put all of those links down below. And I appreciate you stopping by today. But if you're interested in quilting, stay tuned. So I have a few minutes left before I know that my family is going to be, you know, coming out to find out if I'm done with my video yet because I think I've been at it for like an hour and I've had to stop and start and all the things, you know, because all the nervous knots and all the things. So if you have stuck around, let's talk about some quilting. In my last video, um, I had talked about I have four quilts that I had bought backing for and my intention had been over the past two weeks to get those quilted so I could show you in this video, but that didn't happen. And my hope is that maybe in the next two weeks, I'll be able to maybe get one or two of them quilted so that I can show you. Because my goal is to get all of my quilt tops that are just waiting to be quilted, quilted. Um, and that is my goal for this year because I, I have a stack underneath my quilt machine and some of those quilts have been waiting six or seven years or more to be quilted. So I'm really hoping to begin quilting those and get those out and about because I want to enjoy them. I'm going to show you something that I made a few years back. It's just a little teeny tiny. Um, I think this was a Pinterest pin and all it was was the pin. It was, you know, somebody had made one that looks similar to this and I really, really liked it. And so I just kind of copied the pin, but I don't remember whose pin it was. All I remember is that I sort of, um, you know, I, I, I looked at it for reference, I guess. And this is what, this was my version of the picture. And so I used all the stuff from my stash, just little teeny tiny pieces. I worked on it over a weekend a few years ago and it's so cute and I love it. Originally um, it had hung in my kitchen, but the place where I hung it, um, I ended up putting my, um, it's the ABCs, the seasonal, like uh, winter ABC, spring ABC, summer ABC. And so this had to find a new home. And so I just have it kind of sticking out of a drawer for decoration. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story and I'm going to try to make it as quick as possible. Um, so a handful of years ago, my uh, friend Retha and I, we are both avid quilters and we, what had happened was, is it was um, January, February and the weather forecast had been that to the north of us was supposed to get snow, but the valley floor wasn't supposed to get any snow. We were just going to get rain. And so the next morning we woke up and there was like a foot of snow and none of us were prepared for it. None of us had went to the grocery store or anything like that. And we ended up being stuck at home for like a week. So during that period, um, I was texting back and forth with my friend and I said, well, since the kids have a snow, snow day, how about we sew something together? Um, and so she was up for that idea. And so I picked a project and I, you know, took a picture of it. Luckily, the two of us, we both have similar like quilting tastes. So we already have the patterns in our stash. And so um, I went and I pulled the pattern. I sent her a picture, she was up for it. And so we, that's what we made that day. And so we decided to make it a tradition that whenever it snowed and school was canceled, we would, one of us would pick a project and we work on it together. A sort of a way for us to stay connected even though we couldn't sew together. So with kind of, everyone being encouraged to stay home and all of that, I sent her a message on um, Tuesday, Tuesday night, I think it was Tuesday, no, Wednesday night, Tuesday night. I don't know. It was either Tuesday or Wednesday night. And I said, Hey, how do you feel about a snow day? And so she was all up for that. And so she sent me the picture and she said, how about we do this? So this is just called chickens by, um, click, click. So, uh, it's a PDF download. And so a few years back, we had bought this right after it had come out and we'd always intended on, you know, making this together. And of course, you know, in the grand scheme of things, 
it didn't happen. And so now um, when she sent me the picture, she's like, how about this? We'll just make a wall hanging. And so the wall hanging is nine chickens. And I totally agreed. So um, the next day I went out and I called through my stash and I thought, you know, I want it to be um, bright and, you know, summery and, you know, just, you know, with, with everything that's going on, I wanted something bright and happy. And so I called through my stash and I went and I had a small bundle of um, me and my sister, I think it's Bada Bing. It came out two years ago. And this was one of the chickens. So I have all but two chickens done, but I thought I would just show these. I had to pause there a minute because the mail lady came. <laughs> And I knew if she rang the doorbell, the dog would start barking and everybody would come out of their room and then all the things. Anyway, so this is the first chicken. Um, I decided to do it in red and blue. So it's kind of a patriotic. And then this is the second style of chicken. So you have five that are, or four in a nest. So this, I still have two more of um, the chickens in the nest to do. And then the chickens that are standing, I have five of them. So once I get those other two done, I will be able to put them all together. And I tried to get it done last night and it just didn't happen. So hopefully in my next video, not only will it be finished, but maybe quilted because it goes in this room on that wall over there. So hopefully I will have it finished and uh, be able to show that in my next video. Well guys, that pretty much wraps it up for me. I am going to go ahead and release everyone from their quarantine. And I'm gonna go ahead and begin the slow process of uploading this because with everybody home, the grid is like very, very slow. And so hopefully this will be able to upload and get out onto YouTube by tomorrow. So, you know, I'm not late for my Saturday date. Um, I hope you guys stay well. A big happy birthday to my brother, Brad. I hope you have a good day. I know that your birthday probably is like Brian's. It's going to get floated until much later on. Um, so I hope you have a really good birthday. I will be back in two weeks where I will hopefully have much more progress, both on stitching and on quilting. Um, but in the meantime, make sure that you guys are staying healthy, um, staying positive, um, this too shall pass and uh, we're, we're all going to get through it and life will be back to normal before we know it. Um, so anyway, I will see you guys in two weeks. Happy stitching. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye-bye.